All right, so if we're going to do anything with vectors, we better make sure we go over what a vector is. So very simply, a vector is a magnitude with direction. And if you're watching this video, that should be a review for you. But just to make sure we're clear, magnitude means just a measurement, a number, how big or small. And then direction is obviously what direction is it going? Up, down, left, right, forwards, backwards, north, south, east, west. Um, or the one that we usually use when we're solving math type problems is that we go with positive directions and negative directions. And we could even throw angles in there, which we will be doing in the near future. So, magnitude and direction. What does that look like? Well, very simply, we could have a displacement of 5 meters north. The 5 meters is the magnitude. That tells us how big the displacement was. And then north tells us what direction the displacement was. Don't forget, uh, usually we don't use north, south, east, west, and all the other word directions. We usually like to go with something like this. So we have two different velocity vectors here. This one is a positive 8 meters per second. So the magnitude and direction are both there, even though they're kind of hidden. 8 meters per second is the magnitude. Positive is the direction. Down here, it's a little bit easier to see. We have a negative 5 meters per second. 5 meters per second being the magnitude, negative being the direction. All right, now that we know what a vector is, we're going to learn how to add some vectors together. Uh, first thing we're going to start with is pretty basic. So we're not going to worry about any type of numbers or anything like that. We're just going to add up vectors pictorially, that is, with pictures. Um, and so to do that, we've got to talk about how do you draw a vector in the first place. And so the perfect way to draw a vector is with an arrow. So very simply here on the board, I drew vector A. The nice thing about using an arrow is it gives us everything we need in a vector. Don't forget, a vector has two things, magnitude and direction. The direction is pretty straightforward. The arrow points in whatever direction the vector is going. The magnitude is represented by the length of the vector. So don't do any of this geometry class stuff where you have rays that go on infinitely. This is physics class. This is real life stuff. A vector is a set length and that length represents the magnitude. So if I look at vector A and vector B, what I would say here is very clearly the magnitude of vector A is less than the magnitude of vector B. And like I just said, we can tell that because of the length. Vector B is significantly longer. So in the future, when we start to do something with vectors, at least as far as the pictures go, what you have to remember is you can move a vector across your page. So literally, you could take a vector right here like this, and you can slide it around. As long as you don't change the direction, and as long as you don't change the magnitude, the length, then the vector is still the same. So you're going to see that in a moment here, where we're able to slide our vectors around the page without changing them at all. All right, we're just going to start off with a basic example here. We're going to add these two vectors, A and B, pictorially. Um, what we're going to do is use what's called the head-to-tail method. So the head-to-tail method looks something like this. Uh, first thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to identify what's the head and what's the tail. And it, I think it's pretty intuitive, but just to be clear, when we have an arrow, I'm referring to the back end as the tail and the front end then as the head. So that's what I mean when I say head and tail of a vector. So now knowing that, what we're going to do is, like it says in the rule, use the head to tail method. When you're adding two vectors, you line them up head to tail. Now like I just explained, we can move these vectors. We can't change their direction, we can't change their length, because that would change the vectors themselves. 
But what we could do is redraw them almost as if we're sliding them around. So we could redraw them as best as we can, the same length and same direction, but arrange it so that the head of vector A is sitting immediately at the tail of vector B. And so I'm just going to make a little bit of space here on the board. And what you can see here is that I'm adding vector A and B. So this is vector A, this is vector B, just sitting there at the beginning of the problem. Now I've just arranged them head to tail. To find the sum of those two vectors, all I'm going to do is connect the empty tail to the empty head. That should be a straight line. Looks something like that. And so this green line right here is A plus B. By the way, that green line has a special name. That is also called the resultant. The resultant is very simply the sum of two or more vectors. All right, next example problem is going to look kind of similar. But now we're going to take the same vectors, A and B for our example, and this time the question asks us to subtract the two vectors. So we would like to do A minus B, or find the resultant when we subtract B from A. When we think about this, we say, well, we don't have any rules for subtracting vectors. We do know how to add vectors. We just learned that we could use the head to tail method if we were asked to add vectors A and B. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the very beginning of algebra class or pre-algebra class, whenever you learn this. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to turn that subtraction problem into an addition problem. So instead of A minus B, what we're going to do is we're going to write this down as A plus negative B. Because we know that A minus B and A plus negative B, that's the same thing, algebraic. So now what we did is we took our subtraction problem, which we don't know how to do. We don't know how to subtract vectors. And we turned it into an addition problem, because we know how to add vectors. So now the only trick is, well, what the heck is minus B or negative B? Well, I think it's going to make some sense, since we've talked a little bit about vectors already, that that negative sign just means we're going to do the opposite. We're going to go in the opposite direction. So if this is vector B, negative B is going to look like this. They should be exactly parallel. You notice I'm just doing the best I can on the board, and that's what I expect you guys to do on your paper, in your notes, on your tests, whenever this comes up. But anyway, so if this is B, this would just be called negative B. And now we can add two vectors. We have A all the way on the far left. And we have negative B over here closest to me. So all we have to do then is use our same head to tail method. Again, trying to draw the vectors exactly the same as if I'm sliding it across the board here. So there's A. At the head of A, I'm going to place the tail of B using the head to tail method. And so there's my negative B vector. And then just like before, I'm going to draw the resultant. And so this green arrow right here then is just going to be A minus B. All right, the pictures are only going to get us so far, unfortunately. Eventually, we're going to have to throw some actual numbers, some actual magnitudes, not just visually looking at the length of a vector but actually putting some numbers on there. Um, so what we're going to do now is start talking about how can we add vectors mathematically, get true numerical answers for these addition or subtraction problems. All right, just like the title just said, what we're going to do is start out nice and easy. We're just going to start by adding vectors that are parallel to each other. So going the same direction or going opposite directions. We're going to start specifically with two vectors going the same direction. So that's how I'll title this example specifically. These two vectors are going the same direction. 
And so you can see I drew two vectors, A and B. A has a magnitude of two units. Right now, we're not trying to, uh, we're not trying to put this to any kind of use. We're just learning the basic math of adding vectors. So I'm not going to call it meters per second or meters per second squared or newtons or anything. Uh, just A equals two units, B equals three units. And you can see they're both going the same direction. They're parallel to each other. So if we're adding two vectors that are parallel to each other and going in the same direction, uh, we can start like any addition, vector addition problem. We can start with the head to tail method and line those two vectors up. And what you can see visually here is that if we line up a vector with a magnitude of 2 and a vector going the same direction with a magnitude of 3, what we really get is a vector with a length of 5. And so A plus B is very simply 5 units going in the exact same direction. So we almost came up with a little rule there. If we have two vectors going in the exact same direction, you can just add their magnitudes. That's probably worth putting in your notes, even though I didn't write it up on the board there. I'll say it one more time. If you have two vectors going in the exact same direction, the resultant is simply the sum of their magnitudes. All right, you see now the title has changed. We're not talking about two vectors going in opposite directions. Uh, this is going to be rather similar. Um, what we can do is if we're adding these two vectors, A and B, still with magnitudes of 2 and 3, but now going in opposite directions. I changed the direction of vector B. We can line them up head to tail. And what you'll notice here is that Vector A is just kind of canceling out some of vector B. But vector B is still a little longer, so vector B is going to kind of win the battle, if you will. So as we line these up head to tail, we see we just have this little chunk left over. And if you think about it, if A is two units and B is three units, we just have one unit remaining. So the resultant, A plus B, is just going to be a vector with a magnitude of one unit. It's going to be going the same direction as B, because B is bigger than A. So we just came up with a second rule. If you have two vectors going in opposite directions, all you have to do is subtract the magnitudes to get the magnitude of the resultant. Again, I would put that in your notes, even though it didn't go up on the board. Two vectors going in opposite directions, you subtract the magnitudes to get the magnitude of the resultant.